Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. I want to review this chest radiograph with you. I'll give you a chance to just look at the two views. AP upright and lateral. Okay, well you've seen some of the basics of the interpretation of chest radiographs. Tell me what you would describe as the abnormality here. Think about what you would say. What is abnormal here? Remember, you want to first identify that there is an abnormality, if there is, what anatomy is involved, and third, how you would describe that abnormality. So before you get into a differential diagnosis, and you might not even have to, if you are in the role of perhaps communicating an abnormality to another physician, say a radiologist. So is there an abnormality? Yes. What area is involved by the abnormality? Well, let's see. If we look at the lateral view, look at the frontal view, I hope you can see that there's an abnormality here. There's a prominence, an area of opacity, relative opacity, that is more prominent than usual in this area. Remember, ordinarily you would have the superior vena cava and the arch of the azagous vein coming into the superior vena cava here. There seems to be a superimposed density on top of that. Plus, look at this margin of the right lateral border of the SVC. It has a curvilinear kind of shape. So, that looks abnormally prominent here, and it's having some kind of effect on this contour here. Now, what about the right paratracheal stripe? You remember that. The right paratracheal stripe should be right along the right side of the trachea here. We don't see it. Why? There's something abnormal that is probably abutting the trachea on its right lateral aspect, and obscuring that right tracheal stripe. What comprises the right tracheal stripe normally is the wall of the trachea and the fact that there is air right next to it. So something is occupying that space. Let's look at the lateral view. What's abnormal here? Well, it just looks kind of dense up here, looks prominent, but look at the trachea. See how the trachea is displaced a little posteriorly, and it's compressed here. You should be able to see that it's narrowed right here. So not only is there something that's pushing up against the trachea, but it's actually deforming it. 47-year-old male with chest pain and cough, what are you going to think of? Unfortunately, uh, the first thing to think of would be lung cancer. Well, he apparently had some dizziness too. So, as is often the case, we go to a CT head. And let's look through that. All right, so let's see, there's your first overview, just to see what you can and cannot see here. So it looks pretty good coming down here, but there is an abnormality, and I suspect you noticed it, and it's here. Where's the abnormality? You don't have to start off very sp specifically. You can say there's an abnormality in the posterior fossa. That's a very clear, concise, and correct statement. It tells someone what area is involved, generally, and it's very important just to be able to express that there is an abnormality. So there is an abnormality in the posterior fossa. Where in the posterior fossa? In the right cerebellar hemisphere. What is the nature of that abnormality? How would you describe it? It's an area of relative low attenuation. Again, simple, short, concise statements that are correct and informative. So there is a abnormal appearance in the posterior fossa. 
that is specifically an area of low attenuation in the right cerebellar hemisphere, period. Good thing to say and good way to end it right there for the moment. Look more closely and see what else we can see. Do you see anything else there? You see these lucent low attenuation areas that are the cerebellar folia. So what you see are, these are some areas of low attenuation in the cerebellar folia. So what else do we see here? You have this low attenuation abnormality here, and central to it you have this relative high attenuation. You see that right here, where in a corresponding area, it's of relative low attenuation on the left. Here you have an area of relative high attenuation. And so what about this low attenuation area? Well, it looks like it's right around or adjacent to that high attenuation lesion. So you can see that high attenuation lesion here, I hope. And you have low attenuation around it. So now what do we say? There's an abnormality in the posterior fossa comprised of a 1.5 centimeter or whatever it happens to be, 1.5 centimeter high attenuation mass because it's well defined or it's clearly something separate from the cerebellum, although within it. So there's a so-and-so diameter mass in the right cerebellar hemisphere with adjacent edema. Okay, see that's a good simple way to describe it. And what else do we see? Well, the edema usually produces some mass effect, and it's always important to pick up mass effect if it is present. And maybe you can see that this looks a little asymmetric here. The fourth ventricle here looks a little bit asymmetric. It's pushed a little bit on the right side. And if you look down here, ordinarily there's a little space in front of the pons, the prepontine cistern. And here it looks like the pons is pushed right up against here it looks like the pons is pushed right up against the clivus. Okay, so now we have abnormality on a chest radiograph that looks probably like some type of mass that's on the right side of the trachea and actually impressing upon and deforming the trachea as we saw in the lateral view. And on the AP view, we are losing the right paratracheal stripe, which suggests it is immediately abutting the trachea on that right lateral aspect. So what do we think of? Lung cancer. And unfortunately, it is not uncommon for people to come in with an initial presentation of neurologic signs. And that's what first brings to, attend to the attention of physicians that there are signs of lung cancer. And we'll go and get a chest CT or chest radiograph or both. And very often, if you have particularly someone in the middle age range, 40s, 50s, 60s, then you often will see them present with just a brain metastasis. And it's pretty common for lung cancer to go to the brain. OK, so well, they actually got an MRI, uh, which was done after the fact, but let's go right to the chest CT and see what that shows. Okay. Look at this. Scrolling through it just to give you an overall view. What would you say about it? What are you seeing here? Remember, you want to be able to phrase these things in a succinct but accurate manner. You don't have to say everything in one sentence. So what is the simplest, most informative statement that you can make here? As far as this abnormality, you see a second abnormality there. There is a large mass in the mediastinum, period. OK, good. There's a large mass in the mediastinum. What else can we say to make that more specific? There is a large mass in the superior mediastinum. You can see it's displacing the aorta. It's pressing upon it. Let's see, this is going to be the azagous vein. And so that makes this the SVC. 
and so if we go up a little bit superiorly you can see the mass is pushing the SVC anteriorly and laterally it should be more like right around here it's displacing the thoracic aorta it's impressing upon the trachea now here is a fairly normal looking thoracic trachea remember the trachea has a cervical portion and a thoracic portion here it's getting kind of flattened so it's impressing upon the ventral aspect of the trachea at about the level of the carina the carina of course is where the, where the trachea divides and here you can see there's a little more pressure on the right main stem bronchus than the left okay so we have a big mediastinal mass in the superior mediastinum and we can see that even though the mass is not centered at the right lateral aspect of the trachea it is certainly contiguous with the right lateral aspect of the trachea which is why we lose the right paratracheal stripe what's this over here an accessory trachea no that's the esophagus it's often right behind the trachea but I think it kind of got pushed over a bit so it's pushed over farther laterally than we ordinarily see it okay all right so we have a mass let's not describe what it is yet but let's look here what do we have here we have a mass what would you say a small mass in the right lung what lobe is it let's see if we can figure that out so we change the window to lung and these are pretty good looking lungs overall the fissure is right here you can tell because it's where the vessels from the right middle lobe kind of taper off to non-visibility and the right lower lobe also so it's this area where you have a dearth of vessels here and I'm going down here and then there a little bit more anteriorly so this is the major fissure uh, we'll see that better on the sagittal images I think but what I want you to see is that here we're going down so it's around here it's here it's there faint a little hard to see if you haven't seen this much but what it tells us is that this mass is not in the right lower lobe it's not for example in the superior segment of the right lower lobe it's in the posterior segment of the right upper lobe sagittals so here is the right lung here is that deserves a little bit of enlargement there here is the major fissure the right major fissure I hope you can see that I'll kind of glide through it you can see it well here laterally and you see how even on these sagittal images you see it as an absence or a relative paucity of blood vessels so this is the right major fissure and we course back here and so this would be the area of the superior segment of the right lower lobe but you can see that this is clearly not in the right lower lobe it's superior to the major fissure so this is a two centimeter or whatever size mass in the posterior segment of the right upper lobe even though the mass itself is in the right upper lobe why would that be because this is a lung cancer that is peripherally located in the right upper lobe and what we're looking at here are mediastinal nodes so this is mediastinal lymphadenopathy and we often see this combination of a peripheral or somewhere in the lung nodule a small mass and it already has spread to the mediastinum and involved the nodes of the mediastinum and so we have mediastinal lymphadenopathy and that's what we're seeing here and that's what's compressing the trachea is the mediastinal lymphadenopathy so common general presentation of lung cancer you see a mass in the lung and you have mediastinal adenopathy here is the MRI of the brain and it shows very nicely 
the enhancement of this small metastasis to the cerebellum. So uh, an unfortunate but instructive case of lung cancer in a 47-year-old male presenting with a right upper lobe nodule and superior mediastinal lymphadenopathy, which is compressing the trachea.